Hi, I'm Adam from Audio Obsessions, and I'm here to show you my new Blue Iris NVR driver for Control 4 to make all of your cameras that are currently working with Blue Iris, or cameras that you've put onto Blue Iris so that you can then see them within the Control 4 environment. Um, we're going to start by adding the driver. Uh, hopefully you've already downloaded the Blue Iris driver and added it to your Control 4 drivers folder. If you've done so, you should be able to search for Blue Iris NVR and bring in an instance to your uh, project. You want to bring in an instance of the driver for each camera that you want to publish. So I'm going to publish just one camera for the purposes of, of this video. And I'm going to have that be my front yard camera. And when you pull it in by default, it's going to start a 48 hour free trial. And these are going to be all the default settings. The IP address is the obvious one that we're going to need to change. So. I'm going to show you how to set up your blue iris to work with Control 4 before we show you the Control 4 setup. So I'm going to quick switch to my blue iris software and show you the setup of that. So in the blue iris software, we're going to click on the settings and we're going to click on the web server. When you click on the web server, it's going to show you the current port. Its default port is port 81. I'd recommend a higher port. But also, whenever you change the port, you need to adjust your Windows firewall to allow that port through. Um, so this is on port 81. And here you see my local IP address. It also shows me my WAN IP address, but I use a DNS name, which is what we're going to use for the purposes of this video. Um, if I go to users, what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to set up a user that, that your control for is going to send to all of its interfaces. So whenever it logs in, it's going to use this these user credentials from any of the control for interfaces. So the default I have is username password. We'd recommend that you change that both here and on your driver. You want to make sure that it's checked mark as an administrator and that's for some of the advanced features that the driver is capable of, uh, such as triggering um, the camera itself to create alerts, um, or changing the profile or turning the camera on or off. There's a lot of cool things we can do with it. So now we have that set up. We're going to go back to the Control 4 software. And before I show you in here, I just want to verify within a web browser that we can get to the actual camera system itself. So here is the web address that we are trying to go to. Let me actually X this out and show you from the start. We'll go to a brand new page. So we go. The actual um, IP address that we're using is a Dyn DNS name, AODemo is slick.com. And we're going to test our newly put in credentials and make sure that it pulls up images. And yes, it does. So we know that if it works there, it should also work within Control 4. So here we're going to put in the uh, IP address, which again in our case is a Dyn DNS name, and I'm going to set that. I like to set the snapshot refresh rate to be one second, publicly accessible. Username and passwords are the default, which I already made it. So these settings right here should be all I need. Um, and when I double click on the front yard, should pull up our our viewer to see that it is actually working and you could go through this and test all the different uh, formats the blue iris camera software does serve up images in all formats for all control for navigators so that includes motion jpeg h.264 uh, jpeg still images it works on uh, touch panels it works on uh, your navigators from 200s, 300s, 250s, 800s. We hope you're using 250s and 800s. Um, it works on your My Home app and it works on your iOS and your Android. Um, so that's how you get it going. Uh, as a quick preview of some of the advanced features, uh, you can basically see here that I have a lot of different variables and properties. And what happens is I enable the ability for the end user to trigger things within the scene by pressing the location. So when you're physically looking at the camera, you can turn things like lights on and off, garage doors open and close. And we do that um, by both either code or we do it by just location pressing. And there's lots of different variables here on how to control that. 
and make for a really good end user experience, including the ability for us to, to uh, trigger uh, text feedback within the camera image itself so that as you're watching it, you can get the feedback. So we hope you look at some of our other videos. That will end this video for how to set up Blue Iris within Control 4. And we will talk to you soon. Thanks.